My name is Dean Udom. I'm from Abuja, Nigeria. The title of my thesis is Improving Experimental Precision in a Solid-State Electron-Electric Dipole Moment Search. What I've been working on for the past year is trying to make uh, measurements of a fundamental quantity. So most people know what an electron is. They know that an electron has a mass. They know an electron has a charge. Well, there are other intrinsic properties that physicists believe the electron has, and one of them, according to certain theoretical models, is the electron-electric dipole moment. So different theoretical models predict different values for this dipole moment. So it's up to experimental physicists to come up with a precise value and more importantly, a precise upper limit value. So that if a theoretical model predicts that the electron-electric dipole moment is bigger than this upper limit, then you can rule it out and say that it's incorrect or it's inconsistent with experimental searches. So yeah, I'm just making, I just made a measurement of a fundamental quantity in the universe or in space. I just say that there are two types of stuff in the universe. You have matter and you have antimatter. Normally when matter meets antimatter, it annihilates to produce energy but nothing else. But yet that's not what we see around us. We see that most of our Earth, most of the things we can observe consist of matter. And there are many like different physical explanations for that or theories for, for that. And one of that is CP non-conservation. But to avoid going into the name, I'll just say that let's say after the Big Bang, some strange event happened that led to a difference in that led to more matter in the universe than antimatter. So most of the antimatter, you know, annihilated with the matter and we were left with a surface of matter, which is what creates the universe. Now my experiment is a way of approaching CP violation because if an electron-electric dipole moment exists, it's an example of time reversal non-conservation, which is which also implies CP violation. So in a really loose and extended <laughs> way of thinking about the, the most significant impact of this experiment is that it might explain why all why the world exists, like why all the stuff you see around you is made of matter. And you know, not just energy, but nothing else. I did all of my research on campus in Merrill, first floor of Merrill and Professor Hunter's electron-electric dipole moment lab. The equipment that we used was fairly like every part of it was simple and that's actually the really nice thing about this experiment because we used oscilloscopes which all introductory physics students have had experience with. I mean there are some complicated circuits that were built before I got there but it was easy to familiarize myself with how it worked and what each circuit did. But um, so the, I guess the brief overview of the experiment was that we had uh, a circular sample of some solid, with, hence solid state EDM experiment, and we ran a magnetic field through the solid and we would try to measure a voltage difference between the two ends or two ends of our circular solid and this voltage difference would tell us the magnitude of the electron-electric dipole moment. So that's it in a nut nutshell. We used an oscilloscope to measure a voltage difference and we had a circular solid and some wires that maintain a magnetic field within it. My thesis advisor was Professor Larry Hunter. His role was effectively guiding me through the entire experiment. I had no experience with the experiment until the summer of 2009 when I started working on it. And Professor Hunter is if explained every bit of the experiment to me since then. I mean, of course, I've read old theses, read other outside articles, but whenever I had a question, he would be there to, to answer it, or if I had an idea, he would tell me, well, this is great and it's going to work, or that this is a, probably a better way to approach the problem. So it's kind of like having a lab partner that knows a lot more than you do, <laughs> but he's been great throughout the course of the year. It's a very different kind of coursework, as I found, and I'm not sure I don't know whether or not I'll ever do something similar to this again. I'm not sure I'm going to go to engineering school. If I do go to engineering school, I'll, there will be a fair amount of lab work in my future probably and it would be a similar, like, so this would be great because it would be a stepping stone onto that. But divorced from all those considerations, I, I, I quite enjoyed it. It was, it's, it was nice to be able to almost entirely create something by myself and like try to categorize a problem in a way that no one else has seriously done before. Of course, it would be crazy of me to say that I did it all alone. My thesis advisor was a huge part of this process. And, and that was another nice thing. It was, it was great to be able to work so closely with Professor Hunter this, over the course of this year. It has been very helpful to me. And I don't know, five or 10 years from now, I'll probably look at it as one of the more draining and, <laughs> and time-consuming experiences of my life, but I'll probably only remember it fondly.